can YouTubers ever be proper historians? That's the question that Paul Wang has asked. Hi Tick, after following you for over a year, I am totally fascinated by your efforts. Since you are now doing full time on the channel, I am wondering whether you are considering yourself as an amateur historian or a more proper one. As far as I can see, you seem to be the lone wolf of visualising battles in such an in-depth degree. Yes, Indy and his team are doing something similar, but battle-orientated storytelling and my favourite part, the debate, is just tick stuff nowhere else to be found. You should really consider a proper academic career. So Paul is actually asking if I think I'm a proper historian or not, but if we just wind it back a second, um, it doesn't matter what I think if the theory doesn't allow it. So the question really should be, does the theory allow us and can YouTubers ever be proper historians? So I'm going to link to my history theory video. Uh, it wasn't called that, I've renamed it because it was about history theory, but uh, it wasn't called that. So I renamed it, but if you haven't seen it, please go and watch it because it actually spells out a lot of the myths. You know, it, a lot of people think that history is a science and you should just give me the facts. Well, that's the old Rankinian idea and it doesn't really work. So if you think history is a science, for example, go and watch that video. It will open your eyes to what history is and isn't. Um, so, yeah. Now, here's the deal. The theory does actually allow YouTubers to become proper historians. But does that mean that we actually are? So what historians do is they gather the evidence, then they interpret that evidence, and then they form that into a book or a argument or an article, or in this case, a video. Um, so yes, it is in book form or, or written form, but it's still, in theory, it's still a deliverance of the information. So therefore it is, you know, it's still a record. And I guess therefore it, that's acceptable. If, if you if you think a historian has to write a book, then maybe not. But as long as we deliver the information, then it's uh, what's the difference if it's book form or video form? That's not that's not the issue. Um, so in theory, yeah, it's fine. Uh, the only thing we don't do, which we really should do, uh, is we don't have peer reviews. And so what would happen is the evidence and interpretation is made into an argument or a book, and then that's delivered to people. And then other historians would then peer review that book or evidence or interpretation. And it could be a good review. It could be a bad review. It could be in the middle, whatever else. It's other historians reviewing that argument. And we don't have that as much on YouTube. And I think there's a few reasons why. I think there's just not enough of us. I think there's only, really, there's only a handful of channels. And those, I don't think a lot of us know how to do a proper peer review, I don't think. I, there have been some, like, replies to my videos. There was Nigel Askey, which I need to do a reply to. Uh, there was Blitz of the Reich, who... You see, I don't, I can't even, I, I wouldn't even be able to say that Blitz of the Reich's response video was even a peer review because he didn't, re he kind of disagreed. It was more of a debate. It wasn't really a review. Like, he didn't, you know, he didn't go into the sources and didn't do any of that sort of stuff. So it, it doesn't really count as a peer review. It more counts as a, a response, not a review. Um, and there was a lot of other people who disagree with my initial National Socialism and Socialism videos. But a lot of them, again, were just responses, not really reviews, because there's a difference there. Uh, in order for it to be a peer review, I, I guess you'd have to go into the evidence and say, well, did he interpret it this right and whatever. Which, to be fair, in a lot of my old videos you weren't able to do because I've not put any references in the videos, to the most part. There were There's the uh, pinned comment with all the references in it, but uh, the bibliography, but there's no references to some extent in the video itself. So that's why I've kind of waited until I've done a video like I did the other day that actually had references in the video itself, like the um, uh, Soviet POWs in Germany video, which 
there's references at the bottom of the screen. So somebody could now go to that video and peer review it. Did I use the sources correctly? Have I interpreted the evidence that I've used correctly? So on and so forth. Now you can now do that. Well, you can't really do that with the older videos because I didn't put those references per page in there. Uh, so really going forward, this is, has to be a new thing where I put the references of the pages in everything I say. So when I say so-and-so said this, then it's there, page reference, blah, blah, blah. Um, and that will allow people to then review it. And what we need is everybody kind of doing this, every YouTuber who is a historian doing this, because that way that will allow the peer review process to be a possibility. Um, so I'm not sure if everybody else is doing that or similar, but that's what needs to happen in order for the pre pre peer review process to happen. Well, the, then the next problem is, Who's going to peer review us? Like, we're going to peer review each other? Well, I certainly don't have time to do that. Um, you know, I'm rushed off my feet as it is. I don't have time to really watch that many videos on YouTube and then do review, in-depth reviews of them. So, you know, this is why I do Monday videos for the most part, and I try and do that every single week. It's because YouTube's got the algorithm which says you have to upload at least once a week, if not every single day. And if you, you know, if you miss one... Uh, time, then your subscribers aren't even going to get notified of your videos because that's the way that YouTube works. And it's all designed as a way uh, to benefit the corporations and the big teams. Um, it's a whole thing. And, you know, it's it's basically fascism in a, in a way. But now that that algorithm's in the way, it benefits the big channels, the TV corporations on the trend, trending tab. And it doesn't, and you know, and it screws over little YouTubers like me who are trying to just keep up with the flow of things. So I certainly don't have time to stop and go right. Let's let's look at somebody else's video and do a peer review of it. I don't have time to do that. I'm fairly certain most of the others don't have it. So what we could do with is somebody who maybe has got a YouTube channel about history, or somebody who could set one up where they actually make a couple of videos themselves, but then start peer reviewing other historians on YouTube. That would be pretty cool. So there's an opportunity for somebody out there to do it. Um, and as I say, we need to get better at references. So yeah, that's why I decided to ditch the pinned comment in its, not, in its current form and then put the references in the video. And I think a lot of people need to do that in order for the peer review process to actually happen. So yeah, but if in theory, if that happens, if we put references in the video, if there's a peer review process, then in theory, there is no reason why YouTubers can't be proper historians. Now, am I a proper historian? Do I count myself as that? Uh, no, because of the peer review process. I'm putting the references in the video and I can guarantee, like if somebody wants to see my references from a lot of the old videos, I can actually, it take me a while, but I can dig them up. The issue is that I've not been doing that. So from now on, I will be doing that. So from this moment on, right, except for the Q&A videos, uh, I will be putting references in the video, etc., to allow that to happen. So in theory, it's just the question of the peer reviews now. Now, I haven't done any peer reviews, so does that mean I'm not a proper historian? I don't know. But what I am doing, I am doing this full time. I'm relying on my patrons. Let's get the list going. Uh, and, you know... In a sense, I'm a professional amateur up to this point, and then the reviews, uh, the references are coming in, and then the peer reviews. If they do happen, that potentially would make make me a proper historian. Now, I want to address a couple of things as well. So you said, uh, I, I am the lone wolf, visualizing battles to an, such an in-depth degree. Maybe when it comes to things like Operation Crusader and possibly Curland, I would agree with that. But, you know, you said about Indy and his team. Well, there's also military to visualize, armchair historian, potential history, Blitz of the Reich, Anton Jolly. See, that's another thing. Anton Jolly, he's actually a published historian. Like, his books are over there. Uh, hopefully you can see that. His books are over there. Like, he's a published historian who's got his own YouTube channel. Um, style, battle Data? I forgot the, the name of it. Uh he should just rename it Anton Jolly, that'd be better. But yeah, he's got his own YouTube channel, so technically he might be the only professional, proper historian on YouTube. But has he done any peer reviews? I don't know. Um, 
In terms of the battle stories, though, I'm certainly not the one doing it. To the in-depth degree, arguably, in terms of debate, arguably, um, I pretty much try and include a debate in every single video. <laughs> or push one narrative so that people can debate that back. Or, you know, or, or agree with one narrative, because usually there's, it's a, there's a clear winner. Um, and I usually side with that one. So, yeah, okay, maybe with the debate bit, possibly. And you said I should really consider a proper academic career. Well, the problem with a proper academic career and working for somebody else in general is that I'm answerable to them. So I'm not answerable to anybody at the minute. I make the decisions on this channel. I just do whatever I feel like for the most part, uh, except for obviously the Q&As. Um, but I, you know, nobody... I, I didn't predict I would be answering this question a year ago, right? So... Yeah, I am answerable to my patrons, I guess, to a certain extent, but I'm not answerable. Like, I decide. This is, So there's been a lot of backlash in my recent videos, but I'm like, no, there's a distortion. I'm going for it. So I'm not answerable to anyone, really, except for myself and the history, and that's the whole point. So that, that gives me the freedom to then pursue the topics that are in much need of pursuing, um, because when there's distortions of history, you have to hit them head on. And if... I was working for an institution, you know, and they, oh, no, don't say that. You might offend somebody or, oh, right. This is this is why the History Channel ended up becoming the alien conspiracy channel, because they couldn't rock the boat. Their documentaries, like, didn't say anything. You could watch an entire document. The British read Arnhem Bridge. The British are defending Arnhem Bridge. The British failed at Arnhem Bridge. That's pretty much what every Market Garden documentary was on the History Channel. Because they couldn't rock the boat. They couldn't go, oh, actually, Gavin and the 82nd Airborne was actually the reason why. Like, they couldn't even go anywhere near that. Because if they went anywhere near it, you know, people would write in and complain. So, you know, and, that, and that's going to... So that, I think, over time, the History Channel is just like, just, just give them alien conspiracy videos. <laughs> right? I, I don't know. I, I wish there was a fly on the wall for somebody who made that to say, you know what, we're going to make... How did they? How did they make the pyramids? Aliens, right? How did they do it? How did they came to that decision? I have no idea. But I can understand it because there's there's that social pressure, and you know, big companies get lots of feedback, and oh, we better not do that again. And so they they played it safe and didn't rock the boat. Well, that's not history. History is not playing it safe. That's the whole point. The, the debate back and forth and, you know, left and right and all that, that is where history comes alive. And so, yeah, the History Channel dived and died because it wasn't able to rot the boat. And if I was in an academic, a proper academic career, whatever that is, um, then I'm answerable to whoever. And if they go, oh, no, that you better not say that because that might be offensive, then they could just, oh, I'm sorry, take you're going to be sacked now. Like, what? Like, that's not... Okay, the debate is no longer allowed because it's not in vogue to say that. Like, no, that's not... You know, that's not a thing. So me being a private historian uh, actually gives me massive advantages. Yes, it gives me disadvantages because I don't have um, an amazing income. I'd have a lot more income if I went for a proper academic career. Um, but I'm not bothered by the income. That's not what... If I was doing it for the income, I wouldn't have quit my last job because <laughs> I've taken a pay call. Um, so I'm doing this because I love the history. I think I'm, I can do it pretty well. A lot of you guys are happy to support me on Patreon. That's why I do it. Uh, incidentally, there's going to be a Patreon update soon. Um, so there's a thing to look forward to. So yeah, this gives me a lot of advantages. That's why I don't want to do it. Um, yes, I have to... Um, answer to YouTube, I can't break their terms and conditions, which changed the other day, and God knows how that's going to change it, but, you know, and and, and we're living in censorship central at the minute, because YouTube decide, you know, we are the private historians and the private YouTube channels, and they are the, you know, the public sector state of the internet, you know, they are, in a sense, they are a state, a virtual state, that's what YouTube is, YouTube the corporation, and so we're living in this environment uh, because you guys are the consumers, we're the producers, and they are the corporation uh, and the state, the internet state that dictates to us what we can and cannot 
give out. But in theory, if they just left us alone, laissez-faire, we would be able to pursue whatever topics we want. So the, yes, there is a censorship going on, blah, blah, blah. But in theory, I'm not answerable to anybody um, and I can pursue the topics that I think need to be covered, um, which gives me a lot more freedom than I think would be necessary, you know, would be possible in a proper academic environment. Um, so essentially, this allows me to put the history first before anything else. And that's why I'm not bothered about, you know, oh, I'm, I've had a pay cut. Oh, I'm, I could get more money if I went for a proper academic career. No, I'm doing this because I'm passionate about the history and I want to get that right. And I'm not saying I'm always right, but I am in pursuit of the truth. So there we go. So I hope that answers your question, Paul. And uh, guys, let me know. Let me know in the, in the comments. Can YouTubers be proper historians, in your opinion? And if we are, or if we could be, who is and who isn't? Like, am I a proper historian? Am I an amateur? Is Military History Visualized a proper historian or an amateur? Anton Jolly, uh, who else is there? Potential History, Blitz of the Reich, whoever. All these people like Armchair Historian, Indy and his team, are we proper historians? If we are, why are we? If we're not, why are we not? So on and so forth. Just let's see what you guys think about it. So I'm going to leave it there. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.